man, I'm fresh from the dentist today. Uh, <laughs> I I am thinking well, exclusively and, about math, well, mouth bacteria. And it's just funny because like the assistant wasn't there, and it's a dental, it's a dentist I used to work for, and so she was like. You just go want, to her? She, That's cool. Yeah, yeah. And she goes, do you want to help? And I was like, yeah. So I just, like, held my own <laughs> suction and, like, handed my <laughs> own <laughs> instruments. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Kentucky Commons Radio Hour. I am joined tonight by John Renane. Hello. And not Michael Muller. So if you're watching us on YouTube right now, you know we do have two very special guests, but you can't see them just yet. If you want to check out that YouTube, hit a subscribe button, and you'll know as soon as this hits the air. Um, but we do, like I said, have two very special guests. So I want to go ahead and, and introduce our friends, the Peros Pals. The Peros yeah. Pals. Do we get like a song? I feel like it needs a song. Oh, we'll put a song oh, in here. Oh, okay. You want me to intersperse like three seconds of the song for the people on YouTube? Dun, yeah. Dun, yeah, we'll dun, find dun, it. Dun, dun, dun. It's got to be know. really uh, like, Peros Pals. Oh, <laughs> really? Like, pals. very like, twinkle, twinkle. <laughs> it won't be that bad. The yeah. Peros Pals. Pals. Well, I guess now we have the song. Okay. <laughs> there we go. We'll just, we'll just yeah. cut that part out. Thanks, yeah. guys. <laughs> Uh, but we are joined today by um, Haley Peros, uh, National Brand Manager at Wilderness Trail Distillery, and sibling, sister, Michael Peros as well, who is the Executive Director at uh, the Great American Brass Band Festival, also singer, saxophonist, Final Richie. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Heck Hell yeah. yeah. So we do have Peros Pals here. Um, we're ready to talk some music, some beer, some festivals, and... Everything that we do at the beginning usually culminates in a special beer that we bring. So I was excited to try this one. I saw this on social media earlier this week, and you were over there and you snagged one for us. I did. Um, it's yeah. also kind of music themed. Yeah. This is yeah. a Mambo Italiano. Oh, See, there's always a plan. There's always a plan. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is from Gravely Brewing. Um, this is in a pint can. Uh, they just started canning out of their own place. So. This is going to be new for us. That's a very cool can, too. I agree. Very cool. Um, let me pour this up, and then I'll let you all talk about this cool can. I didn't see that glass. I was like, where is that going? <laughs> <laughs> it's into my <laughs> seltzer water. <laughs> this is also a magic show. <laughs> Just right on the table. <laughs> like, we're everywhere. That's what I thought. I was like, it wouldn't be the first time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the nice thing about concrete floors. John oh, hasn't yeah. yelled about my pouring yet. I was, so. I, I was considering it, but I was like, you know. You know, you do pour like a sociopath. <laughs> Takes one to know one. Yeah, well, fair point, fair point. Are we passing these down? We're yeah. Down. Yep. That's Thank there you. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and other Michael, since you're here, <laughs> there can only be one Michael in this podcast. There's only time. room for one. So other Michael, too bad. Do you want to Do you want to describe this can for us? Absolutely. Uh, first off, this can has a gorgeous pattern on it. The... Um, it's uh, it's all kind of it has this unified look to it in the sense that it's all the same lines over and over again, but they cross and weave, and it's got this beautiful gradient from the top to bottom. It looks so, like spaghetti. That's what I, I was honestly like a plate of spaghetti with yeah. a meatball on it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, I was like, Michael's being very eloquent about this, and I'm like, it <laughs> looks spaghetti. like spaghetti. I mean, <laughs> that you know, I was trying to do the right thing here. No, yeah, it's uh, good. But is this a what is the what is this? To me, it looks like a little Vespa. I think it's yeah, a, like a little it Italian, too. like a, a scooter. Vespa. So, yeah. It, you know, spaghetti, Vespa, yeah. Mambo Italiano, it all checks out. On it brand. All checks out. Italian Pilsner. We've from, been big fans of the Italian Pilsner genre lately. Like, uh, it's a good spaghetti Western. It's like Italian, but a little Western hops. Mm. I don't know. Oh. Anyway, so it's got a nice little hop aroma to it. Citrusy. Super, super yeah, citrusy. absolutely. Very Orange nice and bright. Flavors. 100%. Are we drinking yet? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Nice it, little grainy body. The hops really come through on the top. Crushable, delightful, just like uh, Gravely does with all their Pilsners. I'm a fan. It's hoppier than a lot of the Italian Pilsners are out there. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's super fresh to the can at Friday, okay. so this is maybe a couple days old. But, yeah. It's, um, it's very, very, very hop forward. It's very like... Um, it, it just smells like hops that you would like crush in your mm -hmm. hand. Like it's that pungent. Yeah. But it's not in the in the flavor of the beer. It doesn't like overwhelm yours too bitter. I tend to get any time I drink a hoppy beer, it tends to be too much. This is a really nice balance of flavor and yeah. and 
you know, that little bit of bitterness, but nothing that's at it's all not like, offensive. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, well, Italian pilsners are good. Like I think gateway beer for folks, just like exactly because it's got some hot presence, but it's not gonna like smack you in the face. Mm -mm. Yeah, good. Probably go good with a big bowl of spaghetti. I need spaghetti actually now. <laughs> <laughs> we got a hometown. We'll order some like uh like deep dish. They're like linguine in the little cast iron thing. I think it's a Let's stromboli. Go. Yeah, that'll work too. or something like that. that'll work too. But uh, this is dry hop with saphir. Oh, okay, um, that's why it's, it's real dank. Like it's, it's good. Yeah, big fans. Good job, Nick, Andrew, Sean, whole gravely team, whole team, yeah, Crushing whole it. team, all of them. Yeah, great taste, great can. It all works. Well, we can continue sipping on this, but in the meantime, uh, we'd like to get to know a little bit more about you. We could either one of you could start, but uh, who who wants to go first? Who wants to volunteer for like the, uh, the who's who's the older one? Me. All right, we'll start with the older Rude. sibling. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm the <laughs> Old older sibling ass. too. So <laughs> I don't mind. So <laughs> Haley Peros, National Hello. Brand Manager, Wilderness Trail Distillery. Yes. You want to give uh, the listeners a brief overview? What does a National Brand Manager do? Well, um, I've been so trying to figure it out. Uh, you know what? Me too. I've been doing it for six years, and I still don't really know. Um, I mean, truly, Wilderness Trail. We're kind of an anomaly in the sense that we just like a tight run ship. We're a very small crew um, up until recently. Uh, we have had, you know, I'm a total of 50 employees at Wilderness Trail and most of us are, you know, most of those are like ops people, not actually like desk jockeys like me. Um, but as a brand manager, I have done everything from um, social media, helped with label design, um, doing bottle shots, photography. I have vetted distributors. I've licensed distributors and signed them on. I do all the brand education, trade shows, um, PR, media, uh what else? Uh, help with um, barrel programs. I speak for different uh, like bourbon societies. Uh, yeah, every every in and around the bottle, pretty much everything around it. I, I've got my hands on in some way or another. I do tastings. Also continue like I always like continue my education to be as like science focused as I can to like know everything about it, about the process and about what's happening, not only with the juice, but like with the with the wood and what's happening after the fact. Um, so yeah, doing that for about six years and uh, still still rolling on, uh, of course, nationally. So we are in um, 38 states, wow. about to be a couple extra here soon. So we're, we're, you know, I'm a little bit of everywhere when it comes to that. And yeah, everything from education, social responsibility, events, event coordinating, event planning and execution as well. So so like not that much. Yeah, no, like it's yeah. like a pretty <laughs> small job, really. No, probably part time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I could cut back for sure. <laughs> and if you all uh, recognize Haley's voice, you were also a, a panelist on our barrel stave uh podcast yeah, or, or from stave to barrel from stave to barrel uh, thank you david yeah. the panel we did uh exploring the different uh uses treatments etc as a barrels in the state um do you want to talk a bit a little bit about how you got to the role that you are at now it's, it sounds like you're doing a lot so probably did a lot before that maybe i did do a lot before that and none of it was like a straight path you know um so uh, i'll just go We'll just go back a little bit. Uh, so in school, I <laughs> let's go all the way back, shall we? How far back? No. So I was born. Yeah, <laughs> before. Yeah, the, the first part is Michael, and then <laughs> and it goes from there. No, I um. So I actually went to school for. I was going to be a dentist. So I was like in the working in the dental field. I basically was on trajectory to where like I had like my I was working through my biology background all the like you know prerequisite courses everything like that and then you you do four years of that before you actually get accepted into dentistry um and so I would basically do all remote work all online classes and then schedule my work around like my lab times and so I would work in the dental field like as a full-time dental assistant um and I did that for about six years and uh Basically, by the time it came to dental school, I was like, oh, this is not this is not the route I want to go. Yeah. Um, I love the science of it. I love the act and like execution of everything. I cannot stand dental patients. <laughs> Y'all are the fucking worst. <laughs> babies. I am a huge babies. baby. Yeah. yeah. I am like uh, exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Literal babies. Like yeah. I actually was at the dentist this morning for a cavity 
that had or a filling that had cracked. And so I had to have it replaced. And my I go to the dentist I used to work for and her assistant was out. So I just helped myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, I got this. I was holling my own suction. You're like at telling one yourself point. like yeah. spit, <laughs> yeah. open, close. I open. really did. Yeah. Did you talk to yourself and be like, oh, Okay, so that would be where I'm gonna push back against <laughs> dentists. It's like, don't fucking talk to me while yeah. you got like your fingers in my mouth. We Please can don't. understand you though. We can. Oh, uh, We've developed hard to know that. That. Listen, I have Listen, I Is there a class on that? It's just it's just, you know, you, you do it all day long. You just learn what like gum speak sounds like. <laughs> so what we need to do is test this out. We need to write a mm-hmm. script and mm-hmm. see, see if know, I can actually We're gonna do the rest of the ask, podcast yeah. with our fingers in yeah. our yeah. mouths. Yeah. Kind of she weird. has to yeah. ask the questions the and YouTube's then we have to be real weird. Oh no, John, I'm I'm putting my fingers in your mouth. There we go. Yeah, that's the real way to do it. Yeah. You're right. I hope you have latex gloves. Nope. No. No. We're raw dogging. <laughs> no soap. Nothing. No soap. Nothing. Just your salty fingers. Salty, salty beer hands. Anyway, so I decided not go down the path of salty beer hands uh, <laughs> and switch to integrated strategic communications, which is basically... Um, like a kind of a mixture of marketing like it's it's not just like the number side of marketing it's also like branding execution uh there's a lot of like psychology involved and like demographic research and human all that science. stuff you huh? went from you went from teeth science to human science yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and so then during that time um i was approached by um, the NOLA ICDC, which is the North Limestone Community Development Corporation. Um, and, and you went to college at, at, in Lexington, UK? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, at UK. Yeah. And so I, uh, while I was there, I, uh, they're a nonprofit uh, that was based off of the Central Sector Small Area Plan of Lexington, which I read like all 700 pages of. Wow. Wow. It was dumb. It was a waste of time. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Still better than Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but then I, uh, so I was the director of an event called The Night Market. Um, oh, I know. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that was, that was my baby. I didn't come up with the idea or anything, but it was like something that like we decided we wanted to do. And then. I kind of took it over from like the director of the No Lie CDC. And we started with like 25 vendors and kind of like hoping people showed up to, I grew it to in three years, I had a network of over 400 vendors. Um, We were doing it. So basically for those that don't know, it's like an open air market uh, that happened once a month uh, where we'd block off the street. We'd have all these vendors, everything. The whole idea was basically to give like non brick and mortar businesses a platform to sell through. Um, And so it was everything from like, you know, just handcrafted like jewelry to, you know, I mean, crank and boom before they had a brick and mortar. They were one of my my vendors and that's an ice cream place. Um, You know, and so a lot of those places like ended up having shops like down the road. So it was kind of nice to like see that as a part of it. But yeah, did three years of that Um, and then uh, needed to move on to something that would actually really pay my bills. (laughs) That helps. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so um, basically the uh, in 2016, um, the wilderness trail had like their grand opening. Now they'd been, they'd been operating for three years prior, but they had just moved out to the campus that we're on now. And with that, we had, uh, like they had a grand opening and I was looking for a job at that point. And so I, my dad convinced me, he was like, just come, just come hang out, maybe go introduce yourself, you know, those things, see what happens. And so I did. And I actually went ahead and just like printed off my resume (laughs) And I I went to Shane and Pat, the co-founders, and I introduced myself and I just handed them my resume and was like, you don't need me now, but you will. And I hope you call me when you do. Hell yeah. So, and boy, uh, did they. Yeah. Six, <laughs> six months later, but they did. Yes. I sweated a little bit over that. But here we are now. Yeah. That's good advice to anybody listening. People ask, like, you know, how do you get into this, like, industry or, like, if you want to work here, it's, like, just kind of show up and start talking to people and, yeah. like, yeah. you make friends along the way. Exactly. Networking, yeah. Networking being an idiot and just, like, just going, going ahead for it. and yeah. just diving in. Yeah. And, you know, it was kind of great, too, just because, like, you know, I had all this background in biology that I loved. I loved learning the science and everything behind it. But I was like, well, that was a fucking waste. Sorry, can I say that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so I. Uh, That's between you and Dr. Fauci. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was one of those where I was just like, well, what am I going to do? You know, like, but then I entered this distilling world where we talk about biology and chemistry and you know molecular weight and stuff like that all the time. To where it was like, oh, great, I can still utilize this in some way so i completely yeah. agree with you it's yeah. fun to have that kind of different 
intersection of worlds where you can do a little bit of science one day, you can do more kind of consumer facing stuff one other day, you can delve into like social media stuff another day. It keeps it interesting and it keeps it engaging yeah. in, a, in a other way that it could just be like a sales job or like a marketing job. It, you do everything. You wear all those different hats. Yeah, I'm not yeah. just funneled into one, mm -hmm. one spot. And they're so science focused too. Exactly. The yeah. biology. I mean, the, the, what's the yeast? Firm solutions. Firm solutions, yeah. 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 I always thought that was fascinating. The fact that they started with a yeast company yeah, and took what they That's knew right. from servicing other distilleries and then created such a nice product just based on collecting what they, you know, not only collecting information and using that, but also the education that they had and putting that to use and yeah. I think that was Making kind of a the fine story bourbon. Of, like all, all tech got started a little bit that way too. They were a biochem company mm. that the dad had done a lot of work in the biochem space and someone was like, I would like to have a brewery. And like, okay, son, here's a brewery. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, yeah. That's the abridged Easy version. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Michael, you're in a band yeah. and now you're the executive director of a festival. How did how did you get <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And what was it like growing up with Haley as a big sister? Like, oh, oh well, there's a lot of loaded questions here. <laughs> this uh, is a, a time podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here for a while, so I have a few minutes to talk about it. That's awesome. Um, to answer your first question, you know, I I got this gig. I mean, growing up in Danville helps because people know who you are and they know your family and such a local small community like that. And that's kind of how you know, everybody knows everybody through through X, Y, and Z. But, you know, I, I've been working at the local high school there. And um, when they asked me to apply, it was it was based on the fact that I was a musician. So as you mentioned, I'm, I'm in several mini bands, but certainly one of the most fun ones right now is Vinyl Richie. Which we'll say for the listeners, you can you can find your own. You have a good Facebook, follow, Facebook page, Instagram page. Absolutely. But you guys really, I wouldn't say it's just, you know, 80s. You guys do all the great like pop covers of... 70s, 80s, 90s, and today, or whatever they say. Absolutely. So, yeah, you guys are great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's It's been a ton of fun, and, and being a part of that group has really... Um, I have fed it and it has fed me. So it's, it's a nice, it's a nice situation for everybody. Yeah. And, um, it's nice to bring a female presence to the group and also, you know, it never hurts to play Barry, Barry Sachs, Barry Saxophone. Big one, yeah, and, totally. and, and come out just swinging with it and, and not being afraid to do that, which is fun. Um, so I've been in that band for, geez, I think, um, going on four years, I think. Yeah. And they asked me, I was not a singer before that group, but they said, do you do any vocals? And I, I said, well, you know, it's like harmonies and stuff. Okay, we need you to sing this tune and nice. this tune. I was like, okay. So well, all the great power, power ballads are like the female vocals rock the hardest. Totally. So, and, yeah. you know, and they were I think they were just ex as excited as I was to have a female in the band and be able to take on that role. So, you know, I just sort of embraced it and have YouTube University to help myself along with learning technique. And uh, but on top of that, I'm a trained musician, too. So I studied saxophone at UK and with Miles and Lisa Oslin. And and that background alone has been extremely helpful in, in not only the education side of, of what I do, but certainly the performance side and and knowing how to handle yourself on a stage. And there's a lot more to it. You know, we make it look smooth. Sure. And that's our job. Part <laughs> of it, you know, is not letting anybody in on, you know, certain things that might be going on so learning how to be a performer is that's that's as much of the education that I got at UK being a music student was you know you have this one opportunity to put this out there and you're going to do it and no one everyone's going to love it and you have to love it every step of the way so um it certainly helps that Vinyl Richie's a blast and a half I yeah. mean three-piece horn section two guitars bass keys and I mean psh. I mean you haven't really lived until you've heard Beastie Boys with like a full like uh <laughs> like brass section, section. yeah yes. exactly I, I totally can attest to that it's so cool it's did so you cool. pick up music from a young age was that something that kind of has been a lifelong thing it did yeah it was um both our parents are musicians um in their own right and in their own respects and um, mom certainly did the choir thing at church and, and always loved singing and dad's a drummer. And so we, we grew up with this sort of nestled environment of music and that culture. And, you know, certainly dad was pretty uh, pun instrumental in, in pushing that. <laughs> yeah. It. Thank you for laughing. Um, in pushing that, pushing us towards that and, yeah. and learning what good music sounds like and, you know, pop music's cool. It has its value, but there's so much more than than pop music itself. And so, a lot of jazz, Motown, and um, just old classic rock, and and it, really anything, anything. Um, but certainly, learning the value of 
good musicians and what that sounds like and what that really means. And so to this day, dad's always dragging us to concerts and not that we have to be convinced to go to concerts. Sure. It's certainly not, not in my, my playbook or hers, but, um, so, you know, we, we had exposure to it. I think, um, I took to it once I, I had piano lessons and I was like anybody oh else hated piano sure. lessons. Yeah. He was so awful. Yeah. To Our us. teacher was really mean. <laughs> he, he was he used very to mean sit with his head <laughs> down like this and he would just go, while we're playing like under his breath, just looked like he had the biggest migraine. We were like kids and just crying Hot about cross it. Like, buns in oh, tears. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so like, definitely. listen, motherfucker, I'm the future executive director of the goddamn brass band. Festival. You don't know who you're making cry right yeah. now, buddy. <laughs> exactly. So um, but really it really started once I hit band and and picked up the saxophone and realized that I was good at it. You know, it came naturally and and it's like, oh. This is fun, and I I I feel really good doing this, and I'm good at it, and that continued all the way to now. And you know, even though studying mu- mu- mucus music is really hard, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's the connections there. <laughs> uh, it's really tough, and any, any music student will tell you. I mean, it is. It it's there's no experience like it. So you know, not only was I trained as a musician, but I also learned how to deal with a lot all at once, all the time, plus all the pressure, you know, someone looking at you and going, you sound like a sack of shit, you know, and <laughs> literally, <laughs> let, let's talk. Told that. that is yeah. a quote from one of my professors. Yeah, fuck that piano you, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Totally. <laughs> you know, and so le- fast forward to when I got this job, um, which was, it was my first year doing it. So the festival is in June, typically. And so I started June 1 of last year. That's We're in the, awesome. the day before the festival hit. And of course, I had nothing to do with that, any of the planning. That was the director before us did, did me such a, did such a good job with the festival. And I just sort of was able to tag along and shadow. Now, of course, Taylor and I have been avid brass band festival people i mean Since we grew the up day with we it. were born yeah, yeah. <laughs> this it's festival 33 years old 30, yeah. yeah it's as old as me 33 years it's been going on 33 years it's and my festival no. that's Hell a yeah. huge that's a long following especially in a community in that's so small and yeah that's crazy i can't it's hard to think years. of anything else that's been going on like that long that long yeah. yeah i mean i'm sure there's things out there but they're probably like because it, it seems to me like that the, the brass festival does hold on to a lot of the kind of traditional elements. But I'll, I mean, you guys do new stuff too. But I'm trying to think what it would have been like to go to a music festival in what, like 1988? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Ta- Tower of 19- Power has been playing since 1968. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. They're, yeah, they're smoking yeah. too. Like, yeah. if, I could, if I could afford to get them out there 100%, it might take the entire budget. So <laughs> just, we'll just have Tower of Power yeah. play for eight hours a day. Just <laughs> one dead. band, just one dead. festival. <laughs> We nailed it. That's nailed it. it. Nailed <laughs> it. Spent the whole budget on it, but that's fine. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the festival in a little bit, but just kind of touching on that point of like the historiosity of it all. Historiosity. Uh, I like that word. Yeah. I you know, just how word. things change over time. And like, you know, his, nobody really knows what happened in the past. We kind of tell our own stories about it from the present perspective. Yeah. Um, but it's been kind of an interesting time to be, you know, a Kentuckian, uh, both from like the bourbon and spirits perspective, as well as kind of from the music perspective. And they've changed in different ways, I think. But is that something you guys have both been cognizant of as you've grown? I mean, because did you live in, did you guys live in Lexington together at one point? We did, yeah. yeah. What yeah. was it? Maybe that was if you were going to college there. I'm a little older than you. I left Lexington, I think, in like 2000 and like eight or nine. So if you guys were there, you know, a little after that, what was the scene like, both in terms of spirits and music? You know, Lexington's this funny little gym in the heart of Kentucky where it's this little just oasis of um, arts and appreciation of that. And uh, I think it's really, you know, you could probably talk about the no lie market and just how many, like she was saying, how many vendors were there and how many people came to support those vendors in their crafts and their homemade this and their uh, produce that the stuff that they've put their own hands on, and so I think there's a, a, especially in Lexington, a large appreciation for arts and and anything produced by somebody who who that that's their life yeah. and that's their craft, that's yeah. what they do, um, and music, you know, it in in the middle of Kentucky, it's hard to 
it's hard to put a label on anything as far as music. I mean, we have some great festivals here, no question. But, you know, you think about L.A. and Chicago and New York as these music hubs. But I think Kentucky is special in its way that it does have an appreciation for music yeah. and, a, and a wide ar array of it. Um, were they still doing the wood songs, like old time radio? Yeah, when you were down there? That was so fun. That I was the best. They're the still doing song. it. Okay, they're good. still yeah. doing it. It's still happening. Um, what's so cool about that is they, wood songs would catch all these artists before they kind of took off. Yep. And it was such a, it's such a, it's still such a launching point for so many musicians. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff that not only do we need, but we continue to appreciate here, which is really cool. So when you talk about, you know, bourbon and the fe and music festivals, there's so obviously tons of bourbon here, no question, but there's tons of festivals here too. And, you know, bluegrass music is represented. There's, um, there's jazz fest, there's brass band. I mean, those three alone are unique in their own right yeah. and to have them all in one state and plus all the wonderful other music festivals that are are here which is which is great in fact the the lexington herald put a post out last night about some really cool small music festivals that are happening and i just thought that was that's awesome you could yeah. make a whole list of small festivals that are going on and and certainly the large ones too but you know as far as bourbon Haley's obviously the the she knows the ebb and flow of all that side of things too yeah well and i mean i feel like you know lexington overall has changed a lot it's grown up quite a bit it still has growing up to do mm -hmm. but um i think it's grown up quite a bit especially you know like first getting in there you know and, and like the music scene was just basically everyone complaining about how the dame's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and like, That's a legit complaint. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, it was a huge, it was a huge venue, a huge cornerstone for sure. But like, it was Everything just like, it's time. yeah, mm -hmm. well, and it was just like one of those things where it was like when, when literally the scene is so dead that all you have to do is complain about what was, what has passed. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, that's so terrible. Yeah. Um, Like to the point where like, at one point, I had a podcast with a friend of mine called Kentucky Music Preview that was oh, all yeah. about, like, trying to foster the music scene and, like, get people going there. You know, now we have the Burl and, and places like that that are really starting to bring in, like, bigger artists, have a stronger foothold with things, bigger reputations. Um, you know, with the night market, that grew a lot of things for sure. Uh, I... Uh, have like one little point of pride where early on I booked Tyler Childers and his Ooh, band. Hello. Yes. And made them play outside on a loading dock in, the, <laughs> in November and it was freezing. I think he's got a song about that on his <laughs> like, uh, upcoming album. He was very, they were not pleased with me. It's <laughs> fine. That is where uh, Shake the Frost came from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't feel my fingers. Yes. <laughs> but even the bourbon scene, you know, I mean, gosh, you think about like you know, Bardstown and, and Louisville, the, these two, like, you know, Frankfurt, all these big footholds within the like, the bourbon community. And now we have, like, you know, we're starting to create our own little, like, downtown. Like, Fresh is down there now. Um, you know, um, like, William Tarr, RD1, all those things. Uh, James Pepper is coming back. You know, all these. So we've, we've had, like, a, a definitely a resurrection of old brands and, like, new brands coming on stage as well. And, and that's really kind of created, like, a larger community within Lexington. Um, like, whenever we have visitors come in from out of town to visit the distillery, either for you know, barrel picks, private selections, or like some of our like uh, account visits and like executive teams and stuff like that, they often say in Louisville. And clearly because it's like, you know, downtown's becoming like the Gatlinburg of whiskey. Sure. So. <laughs> Until there's indoor skydiving, it's not the Gatlinburg it's of whiskey. It's not there yet. Yeah. No, not really. But, you know, we have Whiskey Row there and it's very historical and it's very, it's very good to have all those things, especially because you can get, you could knock out a lot of tours and a lot of business all in one spot. And so I always kind of encourage people, I'm like, yeah, but Lexington's right there. Yeah. Like skip over some of this stuff, especially if you want to see new things that you maybe have never heard of before. Some of these craft distilleries that are in the area, you know, um, it's less crowded. It's got more of like a homey feel. It's like yeah. more of a college town yeah. vibe too. It's just, yeah, yeah. I really like Lexington. And then there, there's a distillery district in Lexington that didn't have a distillery in it for a long time. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Now does. Now, now has does. a distillery and two sourced uh, products out of there. So, Coming up, you know, it did have it has cidery. There. Plus, on yeah. that road, you've got the Burl and Manchester Music Hall. So, mm -hmm. speaking of 
distilleries and bourbon and festivals. I mean, you know, there it is. There's your sort of uh, uh, proof of that pairing and how well it another good pun. Over. And yeah. Yeah. It's doing, doing, oh. we're doing good. And doing it has good. a billboard for Brass Band Festival. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. nice. Very yes. cool. So. That's got to be gratifying to drive by and see something. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I, made like, yeah. I made that. Yeah. I made that. I have a theory that when I was, you know, I feel like since 2000, let's just say since 2000, I don't feel like anybody really cared about bourbon that much, like in the year yeah. 2000. Like they did, but it was always kind of associated. There were some big brands, but it was kind of associated with like Jim Beam, like Heaven Hill. Um, you know, like a lot of these places, Buffalo Trace and Knob Creek have been around forever, but I don't really feel like that, that it, the crazy shit started happening until like until Mad Men came out is my theory, honestly. <laughs> um, what but, year was that? That would have probably been right around like I don't know late late two thousand around two thousand ten maybe something like would, that. Does that, that feel right? That correlates. All right, I might be wrong about that, but anyway, so you kind of been around the scene during that. Mm -hmm. Did you recognize that as it was as it was happening? Or uh -huh. did yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, we. I mean, like you know, now we have the Kentucky Still Distillers Association. We have the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. You know, like we have all these things that like. <laughs> These these brands have now become destination places, you know, and I joke. Yeah, it's become like the Gatlinburg of, of whiskey. But really, like, you know, the whiskey row in Louisville alone, like wouldn't exist if it weren't for I mean, historically it existed, but like it wouldn't be what it is now if it right. weren't for like the boom behind it of people like wanting to see these brands and wanting to get a closer look at like what they're drinking and, and be more involved mm -hmm. in the brands as well. So absolutely, it's grown so much. I mean, even. You know, we we we've been in the industry for a long time, but like even like in the last like five years, it's just exponential, you know, um, and there's so many different, um, you know, mindsets behind what makes bourbon good, what makes it bad, whatever. But it's left a wider breadth for people to have an opportunity to have a brand in different ways, whether that's a distillery, if you're sourcing, if you're just, you know, doing like uh, finished products, stuff like that. I mean, it's just kind of really the category has like bust wide open. Yeah. So, yeah, I've seen it for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason that Louisville is number three in the country for uh, bachelor parties. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Who's number one? Yeah. Vegas? Nashville? Nashville, Nashville? Vegas? Yeah. It's, oh, geez. I can't remember. It's not Vegas, though. And oh. I really thought it was going to be Vegas. Seems like you've been doing some research. You got anything you want to tell us? Yeah. What's going on here? Uh, I like to go to bachelor parties. <laughs> <laughs> Yours or anybody's? If anyone <laughs> wants to invite me to one. That's cool. <laughs> um, but I know that we're talking a lot about festivals and I have been to a festival with you, Haley, at least once. Yes. Um, and I know I know you've been to several as well. Is there any well, let's just have like a Peros Pals Festival Survival Guide. Peros Pals. <laughs> do you have any do you have any tips? Because I'm going to I think Five, five, four this year. <laughs> this, going the where? the quivering sorry, we whisper weren't. really added to the <laughs> creepiness of that version of the song. It's We're only going to get worse. <laughs> we are totally here for it. But if you are participating in one of these great music festivals this summer, be it Railbird, be it uh, Louder Than Life, be it uh, Bourbon and Beyond, I'm doing Bonnaroo and uh, shout out Blue Ridge Rock Fest out in North Carolina. Or be it the Great American Brass Band Festival, Absolutely. June the 1st through 4th in Danville, right on Center College campus. Look at you. That Love would make it. like several weeks in a row. But yeah, I'm, <laughs> do, I'm, do, I'm committed, you know, and then yeah. Masters Musician Fest. But are, are there festival survival tips? Because it, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, that's that's the one I always go to. But as seasoned people, hydrate. Yeah, that's first and foremost, hydration. Yeah. I'm a hydrator anyway. I'm chronic water drinker. Well, everyone is. You have to, but it's, <laughs> I hear it's you need it to survive. I hear you need it. You know, it turns out it works. Um, I'm no biology major. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a scientist here, but no, I hydrate first and foremost. Like, stay, make sure you get water. There's, there's been some festivals where they maybe didn't uh, check those boxes, so Oops. make sure you get your water. Because that's one of all the big controversies. If people like don't provide enough, like if the organizers like skimp on the water budget or whatever, like yeah, that's that's dangerous. Yeah, to all day is. and not have a good like ability to resupply for sure. But you got to be conscious of it. You got to keep your little bottle filled. Keep it on you yeah. just go have a water bottle yeah or refillable container yeah. right um matt breathable clothes mm. yeah that's a good breathable one. clothes i i like to look cute i like to look nice but man 
I also need something that's just going to like wick all that sweat away, you yeah. know? So, <laughs> and they're long days. I mean, yeah. You know, depending on the festival and the stage, map it out, know where you want to go. Comfy shoes. Comfy shoes. I also, again, like I have this pair of Crocs that are oh, like they're wedges. They're super adorable, but they're Crocs. And so they're lightweight. <laughs> they're great on my feet. You're preaching the choir yeah, here. Yeah, it's like, great. Croc life. Oh, all the Croc way. life. Let's yeah. go. Let's yeah. go. So fuck all these people in their chacas. I'm all about those Crocs, baby. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the fleece line? Crocs? No, but I need them. I need them now. <laughs> Immediately they're, now. Yeah. They're so. Hang on a second. I honestly, I try to pair on. I was like, wow. I'm Walking very on your impressed. Goddamn, it's like a fluffy crocodile. You're just <laughs> like, uh, you're, you're grooving. My foot just went like in the shoe. <laughs> so you're like Croc me. Cinderella, I guess, basically. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing here. Do you all go in with a plan? Like if you're going to a multi-day festival or you like to go with the flow? Like do you go in and be like, okay, I'm going to be here at this time and then I'm going to like take my little break. I'm going to da 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 What do you have more? Are you more like, eh, let it, let it come to me? I think it's a priority thing. You know, find the ones that, that you know you can't miss. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of that, sometimes that just means even if you, you know, finding the ones that you aren't going to get another opportunity to see, if you don't, even if it's not quite your thing, you know, go, go listen. So I think for sure, you know, plan to some extent, but be flexible and be, you know, as yeah. anything, be open minded, have big ears. Loose plan, have big ears. I like that. I like that. You know, yeah, loose planning. You know, I usually have like my anchors, yeah. whatever the ones that are like, ah, oh, these like are must sees. Three or four or five or six that I have to see. And yeah. then the and rest then of it. Everything else, it's like, oh, you want to go do this? Sure, fine. I don't know. I also think that comes from like the way we were raised. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking <laughs> to where, about. <laughs> to where we have to be flexible <laughs> at any given moment so it sounds like when you were being taken to these music festivals you there was maybe an agenda for who you were going to listen to is that kind of what i'm hearing they're 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 growing up <laughs> as a paros meant <laughs> as a paros as a paros it's a thing you, it's, it's a real a, thing it's a real thing there there there's a there's a mm -hmm. a hurry up element okay gotcha you know, we didn't go on my, vacation. We had some of that in that. my family. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Vacations, yep. were they stressful? I think that might be like a thing of our parents' generation. It's yeah. like, go, go, I've got go. two weeks off work. <laughs> like, we are going to, we're going to have so much fucking fun on this vacation. <laughs> it's like, 7.30. Yeah. Get up. So yeah. like, yeah. Oh, get up. Yeah. Eat as much breakfast as you can because yeah. we're not taking and lunch. And you better piss now because <laughs> we are <laughs> not stopping. Yeah. We definitely, you know, and now, now it's a different story when you vacay. It's. I don't we got an Airbnb, like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, go out to brunch. Yes. That's kind of how I am when I go places. Just Crash like, city. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. looks fun. Let's do this. Maybe have a few things that you might want to do, but maybe it's like, maybe it's a similar approach to the festival thing. Have a few bullet points and then be flexible the rest of the time and find out what works, you know. Yeah. My tip for festivals is always go see someone that you've never heard yeah, before like that. because it will literally... The, that having zero expectation and going in will blow your fucking mind. Especially live. Once you hear, I mean, you know, you listen to anything streamed, you listen to anything on, even on a CD, but it's digital vibration. It's not proper vibration. So you hear music in person. That's what, that's what's, that's the appeal for records, right? Cause it's an actual vibration sure. there. Mm -hmm. It's reading the vibration. It's reading the code instead of a digital production of it. That's what makes music so cool. Live music. Cause it's, you're getting every vibration. Your your body is processing it in such a way that you can't get any way else. And that is why music's the best. Especially with those brass instruments. It's like, Absolutely. it comes out at you, man. There's no, <laughs> yeah. that's how it works. That yeah. person. That's, that's like that science. Like, totally. Yeah. It's, it, it is pure sound. It's pure. And I what I love about brass instruments too, you know, I, trumpet, trombone, but anything else also that's produced by a human. You can play guitar, you have to plug that in, in in order for it to be heard, mm -hmm. at least at you know, most circumstances, not acoustic, obviously. But any trumpet, you know, you ask any trumpet player, you challenge them, you're not going to be heard 50 yards away. Oh, they're going to be heard 50 <laughs> yards it. away because yeah. it is a game on. And you always experience that electric. That's why horns are so electric. It comes right from that person's diaphragm and lungs yeah. straight through. So how they breathe and how they stand and and where they're looking and and what their posture is, it all reads through that sound versus, you know, maybe an, an amplified instrument where you're not going to get so many of those nuances. 
but finding breasts. And there's like fucking like, what is that band who just like pushes buttons? Like Moon Taxi or some shit? That's oh, a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, Moon Taxi. Yeah, it's EDM like, or whatever. Yeah, like, and that's cool too. It's like, cool whatever. for sure. But it's different. For sure. Yeah. It's, uh, it, what I love too um, is that it, it, is that those people, the people that play those brass instruments, it takes so long to learn how to do any of that. And I mean, it's it's physical too. It's like, so you know, physical. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. you're going to, you're probably tired as shit at the end of like a, so tight. two hour set you probably like just ran a goddamn marathon it's like when i have that berry on it's like yeah and it's heavy how much do yeah. things weigh 30 I, you 40 know, pounds i never weighed it but i need to because i ask myself the same thing every time i probably wear like, it, probably like 200 it. Pounds. why is this so heavy <laughs> not only on my back but in the case too i'm like this is, should not be the but yes it takes so much long and i get the same comment yeah. every time which is that thing's bigger than you and i always think well yeah but you know that doesn't that's mean cool. I that's can't play. That's why it's so it. powerful. That's why it's so cool because it's huge. So, if there are listeners out there who were getting excited about brass instruments with all of this talk about sound waves um, and talk about coming to new music festivals, what could people expect coming down uh, to check out on June first through the fourth uh, the <laughs> Great American Brass Band Festival in Danville? Oh man, that's that's a cool question because there's so much to enjoy there. First off, you come to Center College as a noob. I'm not like a brass band guy. Perfect. Have yeah. you been to Danville? Oh yeah. So anybody that hasn't, you go there. It's a beautiful town. It's clean. Uh, everybody's super friendly. You know, you walk down the street and you're going to get spoken to even if you don't want to. <laughs> you know, you're going to get, hey, how you doing? Just walking down the street. You go to Center College. It's small, but a beautiful place and a beautiful facility. So to put a, a big stage on that facility and then to host all these different groups is is a real treat for us just as, a, as an organization to have that privilege. Um, but then to, as far as the music aspect of it you're gonna hear anything from more of a traditional british brass band which is totally there's a lot of people that really enjoy that music but um, is that kind of what i'm picturing people wearing like pinstriped hats or like am i off base there there's you know there's there's different ways to approach it uh, most people go with you know a nice clean uniform seersucker or okay okay you know okay. like yeah. Yeah, a polo or something okay but, gotcha, gotcha. but there's also there's some historic brass bands so people bands that show up in full civil war okay. regalia because that's yeah. they're, they're simulators right of that music and of the style and the look and everything um so there's those traditions but then and and that's probably what the festival's most known for as far as sticking with one tradition it's it's kind of been held in that that camp pretty well which is the british style and the concert band the wind band but once i got the job i knew that there's so much more to explore mm -hmm. and there's so much more to incorporate into that lineup and um and you know something that's been around for 33 years there's everything needs change everything needs an update and every anything that's been around that long 33 years i mean we start to update ourselves at 33 years yeah, right you know the return of saturn right exactly <laughs> so you know this year when you come you're going to hear how, what i wanted with this, the goal with the lineup was for everybody to feel represented and um so you're going to hear british brass band historic brass band uh, Latin music, mariachi, oh, yeah. New Orleans style, funk, soul. There's that whole array and it's only been tapped into a little bit. So, you know, taps, I think that's another good taps. Pun. That, uh -huh. I, anyway. I'm three for three on yeah, the puns. I mean, I only it. intended one and here we go. <laughs> this is not good, but, uh, but you know, again, the, 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 the music that's been, it's those other styles that haven't been tapped to it, into as much. So again, the New Orleans style and um, one, you know, for example, one ensemble that we've got coming um, is a is a nine piece horn section, wow. and they just stand right up front in a straight line, and it's called the Cincy Brass, and and they they emailed me and said, hey, check out our group, and I did. And I was like, blown away so you know it may look like a new orleans style group but they bring in uh funk tunes and anything sort of in that camp which is funk and soul and and some jazz inspiration as well yeah. um and then you're going to get the, the classic new orleans style which is you know snare to rat tat -do -tat -do -tat -do -tat, and then you know tuba blasting and and Trump two two or three trumpets just screaming in your face and everybody's just wow you know because it it creates this effect that's really not replicated in any other way. You know, a guitar makes a great sound, but especially if you know what it takes to play those instruments, you know that it takes physical effort. It takes serious technique to be able to execute that. And that's what 
of another part of it that I can really appreciate, which is truly the work that that goes into learning all those. So, you know, again, I want everyone to feel represented and and we're introducing mariachi for the first time yeah. in the festival. And I, there's no replacement for a mariachi band and the warmth that the strings bring, but then also you get one or two brass players up there and they just ring out over everybody. Again, trumpet players, right? You challenge them to... <laughs> To, it's like drummers. Oh, it is. It's like, how loud can I be right yeah. now? No matter how bad it sounds. But, <laughs> but you know, mariachi. And, and so we're, we're bringing in, bringing in that. And um, not to mention if, if we got any brass band fans out there, they're soul rebels, uh, huge in the brass band realm. Um, so they're playing with trombone shorty and they're right up there with no BS brass. And they're playing with white cliff Gordon and any of those, kind of hip hop almost based groups. So they're based out of New Orleans and that's where they call home, but um, they've got a ton of jazz and hip hop influence as well, kind of embedded in their sound. That's so awesome. to bring them here is, is huge. And I think they've been to the festival one time many, many years ago, but it was before they got really big. So to have them back when they're big and, and playing on these huge stages and playing jazz festivals and, and to have them in Danville, Kentucky, is just, yeah, that's incredible. So exciting. stellar. And just right? to picture all that happening in such a charming, uh, like little like venue, you do feel like you're transported back in time a little bit. Like. Absolutely. And, and in some ways it's, it's more modern than ever because sure. of the, again, the, the hip hop elements that are introduced and, and not only in a vocalist aspect, but the grooves and the beats and very hip hop influenced, um, very jazz. So there's definitely some things that are going to take you back in time, but there's tons of stuff that we have that's going to bring you right to the present. Oh, yeah. Well, that sounds like an excellent time. And if anybody wants to check that out, I think you guys have a good Facebook page set up. And uh, what's the website where people can look at that as well? G-A-B-B-F dot org. Easy. We'll link to it in the show notes as well. So awesome. yeah, highly recommend anybody. It's a super quick drive down to Danville. Uh, it's a beautiful drive. And uh, once you get down there, it's going to be excellent, too, with some good music to boot. Hey, John. Yes, David. Can you say Danville? Danville? Michael, can you say Danville? Danville. Uh, Haley, can you say Danville? Danville. But then what's funny is how do you say uh, Louisville? <laughs> like, we're not really consistent with our villes around right, here. Right, right, right. Yeah. Th that's what I was catching on to. But yeah, Louisville? It's, it's Louisville. Louisville. Yeah, yeah Louisville. I think okay. I say, if I go to Louisville, that's what I say. Danville? Does that sound foreign if I say Louisville? No, it no, sounds that's, familiar. Yeah. That's okay. what I was curious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, well, what do you say? Danville. Danville. Yeah. Danville. Like Dan owns that Bill. Danville. 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 Like an <laughs> anvil. This is why we won the Dan award uh, for best podcast in the Bill. world. <laughs> we won best beer trail, not podcast. Clearly. Next year. It's all right. <laughs> it's on the list. We're we're making it happen right here. Yeah, this, this is, is the gold start. Content. <laughs> this is gold. It's going viral, baby. What we are making happen tonight is we are participating in our Berg break. Yeah, so. I mean, in my head, I've now been in a music festival all day. I feel kind of worn down. I feel kind of like I need a little bit of a pick me up. <laughs> Nothing better than our good old friends at Underberg. Uh, David, did you know that Underberg was uh, <laughs> represents five generations of we, we don't even we weren't even told to read copy. We just thought it'd be funny to make up some like fun copy, but they were a company founded under Hubert Underberg, launched as a unique product on the market in 1846. Do you know what was happening in 1846? No, David. I was hoping you did. Oh, I did. We looked up. We looked some stuff up before the podcast. <laughs> but uh, both uh, Charles Dickens and Friedrich Dostoevsky were writing some of their great novels, as were both of the Bronte sisters. So, kind of interesting as we talk about the history of these things. That Underberg is a product that you can get any great bar. Ask your bartender if they have it behind there, and if they don't, hassle them and tell them to listen to this podcast. Well. Uh, but Underberg's a great little way to settle your tummy, gear yourself up for your next round of like, uh, if you're about to go see, what was the what was the name of the really exciting brass band? Oh. The, the last one you just mentioned? Soul Rebel. Yeah, Soul Rebel. You're about Hi, to go check yeah. out a show. You're like, ugh, do I have it in me? You do if you, you have an Underberg. Do. Yeah. It even will says take you there. to feel bright and alert. Yes, exactly. I mean, that's all I ever want. So, <laughs> so uh, the name of the game is just in the mouth, usually about a 45 degree angle, and just glug, glug, glug. Cheers, Underberg. Cheers. It's terrible Cheers. with that label. Right yeah, there, I, it Michael. was really bad. It's, it's bad really embarrassing. <laughs> oh, I don't. I feel nervous now. I'm too. Do I have to do the whole thing? Mm -mm. No. Okay. It's all optional. And if you save up your caps, you can get some it really nifty weird. little rewards swag. Treats. So thank you, Underberg, for supporting the podcast. We love to support you, and it really is just a nice little way to break up the pod, break up a festival, to break up a night of drinking with your friends. I really just like. Underberg. 
I mean, it's also just delightful. I feel bright and alert now. <laughs> it's like uh, I'm wildly bright and alert. Woken up my I'm palate. Awake. Yeah. There's there's a point in time where my hair stands when I take it, and I'm like, this is it. I'm alert again. This is it. I feel alive. This yeah. is the I'm moment alive. I've been waiting on. It's the elixir. <laughs> Elixir of life. Where do you want to go, David? Do you want to move it into a show and tell segment? Where are we going? Are we going somewhere? Oh, we're going. Oh, we're, we're going. going. We're going. Taking this on the road. I think. Oh, I think John and I talked of a little bit before uh, today, much much before today, months in advance, and uh, we thought about a a fun game to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is going to be a section where we quiz one and two Paros pals. And to be fair, you don't know the answers either, so you can play this time. I don't know them at all. Yeah. But, oh my God, it gets worse every single time, but also strangely better. But this is a little section we're called, we're calling, is it a pretentious song or album title or a pretentious beer name? Oh. We so, get to just as we know, yeah, all these like starving artists, they all think that they're the next, like, uh, who's a cool musician? Drake. No, he's not. He's like a. Aww. They all think they're the next Moon Taxi. Like oh, they all God, think they're man. the next whatever. Who's so like great right there's now. a lot of good emo vibes that go on in the uh, the music world that leads to a whole lot of pretentious album names and song titles and all that good stuff. All brewers kind of have like a, a like a like a underserved artist vibe. So you often see this kind of like emo pretentious like naming. Uh, what I don't even know what to call it. It's quirky, quirky, yeah, yeah thing kind of come into like the beer try world. Hard. Yeah, it's a bit try hard, yeah. exactly. Like I wanted to be craft because I named it something obscure, and they're yeah. gonna have to ask me about it. Yeah, yeah. and if you have to ask, you're like you don't, obviously you don't understand. You're not like, in Zeus's on it. Yeah. Mustache. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I've got a list of some here, and uh, David, you can play too because I came up with these independently. Oh yay! Uh, but you can't answer Surprise. the first couple because we're gonna start a little easy, and you guys really just tell me album title, song title, or name of a beer oh, oh we're deciding you're saying what it is we're deciding what we think that that is thing yeah is. Oh. i would say like a pretentious okay. phrase or sentence and then you say okay that sounds like a pretentious song title or album oh. title music or oh. beer oh. which Tricky. category of pretension are we can in? we can we do a test run mambo italiano <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, song ironically, is a song, <laughs> song. <Yeah. laughs> or 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 a beer or a beer or a beer done by gravely does anybody need a backup beer or anything you guys all good we got good. plenty more in the fridge totally good all right, so, so we'll song, eat song or what? What's what are my so what are music options? pretension, which could either be an album title or a song title, okay, or a pretentious beer title, okay, such as Mambo Italiano is a funny example because it's both. But <sighs> uh, well, we'll 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 start here and we'll see if you pick it up. All right, all right, all right. So our first entry: Space Station, Middle Finger. Feel free to talk it through. Okay, okay, can we? Uh, so, Use it in I, a sentence. Yes, can we? Can we hear <laughs> I really enjoy <laughs> Space Station Middle Finger. <laughs> Just trying to figure out how to do that. It sounds like a beer to me. Oh man, it's not a go. not a Blink One Eighty Two album. No, it, it 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 could be, but I'm gonna go beer too. I'm leaning towards beer. Ding ding! That is uh, by Three Floyds out of Munster, Indiana. That's their American Pale Ale, Space Station Middle Finger. Nice. Space yeah. Station, but That's it could have yeah. gone easily. the other way. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. are we? Why are we? What are we doing? Were we flipping off astronauts? Like I don't know. Like what are we? What so the, the label is actually fantastic. It's oh, okay. like this galactic style um, space station made of bones, and then sticking out as a finger, <laughs> middle hand. finger. Yeah, and if you're asking bones. why, clearly you don't understand. Yeah. yeah, clearly. You don't get it. You don't get it. That's okay. I'll say, okay. Sure. All right, sure, so guy. <laughs> number two. Let's see if we can go two for two here. Chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water. A band music. Is that a consensus? Yeah, I think David, so. David, you want to weigh in? I'm going band. All right. Yeah, like all music, think, right? All think Some, music? Uh, um, yeah. You guys got it. Woo! Uh, chocolate starfish. Did you know that one, Ryan? Chocolate Starfish <laughs> and the Hot Dog Flavored Water is the third studio music. album by American <laughs> new, metal ba- new metal band Limp Biscuit, released on October 17th, 2000. All right. They did it all for the Nookie. Always. I'm going to break stuff. You say the what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Give, give <laughs> David what? something to break. There you go. How about the record for three out of three in the quiz? Oh. Let's see if you can break that. Pressure's on. Elf Tower, New Mexico. Are those mutually exclusive? <laughs> Elf Tower, New Mexico. Is that a location? It sounds like Elf <laughs> Tower, New Mexico. <laughs> now it's a question. 
Is this a location? Can we point it out on a map? It's near uh, Troll Bridge. Santa Fe? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Uh, uh, music? Band. Oh, ba- yeah, okay. band. band. Ba- music. Okay. We I'm also- just picking music. music yeah. Just general category. Right? Elf Tower, New Mexico is a B-side from the 2002 album The Second Stage Turbine Blade in the 11th track on the 2005 reissue of that album, considered to be a rarity in the Coheed and Cambria live catalog. Just that description alone I, I, yeah, put was, it into just like <laughs> pretentious why. Like, what I'm, are we I'm doing? trying. The realistic B album of the second side of your mom's butt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see if we can go more pretentious with our next entry yes. here. I don't think... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Geriatric Hipster Club. Oh. That sounds like a beer. beer. That sounds like a beer. Beer. Okay, we're going with beer. I'm going with band. Oh. Okay, David's branching out. Yeah. Right. Here we go. We're All right. Divided. How does the song go? Paro Sisters. Paro Sisters, Sisters are still <laughs> on a winning record. David is now uh, yes! David is now losing. Second, the Geriatric <laughs> Hipster Club made exclusively for the brewery, the breweries, Hoarders Society members, uh, is a 12.2% American strong ale aged in bourbon barrels with orange peel and spices. I don't want it. Uh, that was it. Was their take on a mm. a beer, an old fashioned turned into a beer? Oh, oh that sounds. I terrible. don't want it either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody on Untapped was like, I love <laughs> "Cool thanks, name, but no thanks." But yeah. <laughs> All right, our next entry here. We're still we still have two for two on a perfect streak. We'll see if we can break it. Uh, Purple monkey dishwasher. Purple monkey dishwasher. I feel like it's too eclectic for beer mm-hmm. oh yeah what's a dishwasher beer i don't know mm. i'm going band or Purple music sorry monkey monkey dishwasher beer. music i music. feel like it's a beer i feel like it's a beer too. God damn it <laughs> <laughs> hero sisters keep the record alive <laughs> a robust was, porter was... made with chocolate and peanut butter eight point or seven point uh seven percent by evil genius beer company in philadelphia pennsylvania the audacity yeah. that's terrible <laughs> Oh, it's Genius. pretty bad. It's a tough. Oh, I just picked up this new pack of Purple Monkey dishwasher. dishwasher. Yeah, you want to split a can? The can wasn't even cool. It was just like purple. I'm like, what? The, come on, guys, you got to try, try hard. If you're gonna try hard, try hard. Try hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, all right, so we've done uh, Purple Monkey dishwasher. Our next entry here: Whirlpool Vision of Shame. I feel like Moral I go vision band. of shame. I'm going band. I'm waiting for the Peros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got it. They're Ted, whatever we are for whatever we are. We're, yeah, but they're, we're in there. We're in there. <laughs> we're we are there. hanging in perfect there. Perfect record. But so the, the Whirlpool is like the process. Part of a beer. Yeah, yeah. it's part of a brewing process. Uh, Was I trying to psych you out? I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to side with band. Oh, unless we lead you astray and are. then you're going to hate us all night. <laughs> Always listen to the Peros sisters. It is track 10 on the Strange Idols pattern and other short stories, which is the name of the album. Good job there, too. Uh, by the UK band Felt, released in 1984. I listened to it. It is fucking terrible. Oh, good. It's, it's as bad as okay. it sounds. Yeah. It's like uh, trying to be avant-garde, but while lacking being interesting at all. Sorry to the members of Felt that I assume listen to this podcast. <laughs> there goes our Felt audience. There goes our Felt oh audience. Yeah. We're never we lost get the Felters. We're yeah. never God. getting them again. The Felters. <laughs> I'm in a whirlpool vision of shame. I'm sorry, Felt. Please sponsor us. <laughs> our next contestant, Pet Rock and a Moon Boot. Pet Rock and a Moon Boot. Uh, this is weird enough to be beer. Yeah. Beer. Yeah. I feel like it's Michael's torn. Oh, man, Ooh, don't I be feel influenced. Really... Will the Paro sisters split <gasps> over Pet Rock and a Moon Boot? This Paros, is where our sisters. <laughs> <Paros. laughs> this is where our, our sister All right. We're no longer related. Because I'm after going this. with peer pressure. Whatever they said. Was it beer? Beer. <laughs> Peer pressure always pays off. Pet Rock and a Moon Boot. Juicy IPA, 6.8% by Thunder Island Brewing in Cascade Locks, Oregon. Our next entry. All clockwork and no bodily fluid makes Hal a dull metal Humbert. Where All do you clockwork. find these things? Where do these I am on some weird from? forums. <laughs> I'm on some weird forums. Uh, Lolita reference, I think, there with Humbert. And a uh, Shining reference, I guess. With the all work and no play. Oh, sure. All clockwork mm. no, and yeah, no clockwork bodily point. fluid. Make uh, Hal, 2001 A Space Odyssey yeah. reference, 
A dull metal Humbert. Humbert Humbert was the guy from uh, Lolita, I think. Oh, metal metal. So this could be a track or an album name? This this could be be a track or an album name or a beer name. Yeah. Music or beer, either one. Yeah. If you want me to read it again, I'd be happy to. It's ridiculous. All clockwork and no bodily fluid makes Hal a dull metal Humbert. Oh my gosh. This is like the worst Jeopardy clue (laughs) ever. (laughs) I'm almost nervous. I mean, I don't know. You guys, you're perfect record. You're perfect record. Putting the pressure on. I'm sweating. Um, Thoughts? Do we want to talk? Yeah, you can confer. You can confer. It just seems too Wait. long to be a beard. But I also feel it's like been, that's the catch. I know, right? I'm getting that... I'm psyching myself out over here. Like I know there are some of those breweries. Like, didn't Evil Twin used to always do that? Like they would have a beard thing that was like a paragraph long. Like, yeah, there are some people oh, out there who are that dumb. So it does exist. It does exist. It's possible. That's yeah, it is possible. Tricky marketing on mm-hmm. that. <laughs> yeah. And- Where are you at? Where are your thoughts, David? I'm waiting for the consensus. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Man. Play it safe. Man. All clockwork. And no bodily fluid makes Hal a dull metal Humbert. This is when I would say, I would, I, would, I would totally go to the audience, do an audience vote on do it. Do we get Berg to? <laughs> <laughs> Can we get, yeah. Ryan? No. We, are, we are filming this podcast for the live audience. <laughs> the live Frankie? studio audience. Ooh, I feel like uh, it's a beer. I'm going to say music. You're saying music? I, me too, because it's it, just the length of it alone. I'm but the, having to read that off of but yeah. that's why I feel like it could be a could beer be. because so this is some pretentious bull, right? Like, so, you know, they're not thinking of like marketability. They're just making a dumb name. Final oh. answer, Saturday music. Music? Oh. I'm going beer. Oh, is it? Oh, Don't try to read me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, did. I did. You don't know me. I'm going beer. <laughs> My vote's beer. All clockwork and no bodily fluid oh makes God, Hal a dull metal it. Humbert. <laughs> is track 22 Ah. on Lolita Nation, the fourth full-length album by Game Theory, a California power pop band fronted by guitarist and singer-songwriter Scott Miller. What year? Originally released in 1987. 1987. Yeah. All right. Scott Miller. I feel like, duh. 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 You don't know Scott Miller? You don't know? Come on. (laughs) All right. Our next contender, and we do have uh, someone in the room who does uh, 70s punk power covers, Cygnus X1. Cygnus X One. Oh man! Dead air. Cygnus dead air. X- dead air. <laughs> Tough. That is. I think yeah. dead air can be like a uh, very intense. Yeah. If oh, you're okay. like, if there's like an awkward pause, that it, it can be like, oh boy. But if it's like the audience is riveted now too, I, I can guarantee. I was no, like, on in. the edge of their yeah. seats. My God. But who? I was like the who's one. Yeah, who wants to be a millionaire? Dead air because they would just do the clock. Do, 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 do. Yeah, do. yeah, yeah. It was really intense, like, traumatizing. Yeah, <laughs> anxiety, <laughs> anxiety like, provoking. <sighs> I'm sweating yeah. watching. I don't feel so good, mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need this guy to get a million dollars. I need him to get a million dollars. <laughs> I need it so <laughs> bad. <laughs> I need him to get this because my my sanity is riding on my it. My dignity is oh. is in this too. I said, see. <laughs> no, you idiot! Why are you phoning a friend? Why? No, don't waste, waste your lifeline on that. I always thought that, like, when they phoned a friend, it would be me. Were you, were oh, you yeah. like hoping, oh, like, suddenly out of nowhere, <laughs> got to got to like stand by my house phone? And like, oh, David, how yeah. are you doing, bud? I gotta be really honest, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Were you like, were you ever like preparing, like, scripting yourself for it? Were you ever just like, what would I say? We well, all had just, those thoughts, I'm sure. Yeah, like, yeah. are you ready for the the call? Is oh, yeah. There, okay. Yeah, big yeah, time. Yeah. Well, what if they called and said this? <laughs> thanks thanks David, for bringing us uh, back around. I need to know, <laughs> Cygnus X1, I've already used my 50-50, and the, uh, the remaining options are uh, album or song title or the name of a beer. What should I pick? I'm confident that's a beer. Yeah, okay. beer. I'm going beer. beer. Okay. Well, well, this was a trick question. Uh, oh. So it is as book. much as the Mambo Italiano is a beer named after a song. Um, Cygnus X One is a song that is part of a two song series by Canadian progressive rock band Rush. The first ah. part, Book One, The Voyage, is the last song in the 1977 album A Farewell to Kings, and the second part, Book Two, Hemispheres, is the first song on the following album. Oh man, you know we're we're uh, so Vinyl Richie plug is uh, coming <laughs> up with some really big like ticketed shows coming up. Um, 
I'm not going to say where they are, right, to right. be released. So follow Facebook and find out. We might be playing in your area. Um, but uh, that gives me some huge ideas for some really epic. We're like, we're looking for some really epic tunes to do, something that nobody covers. I mean, you guys Rush could do a good, be, yeah, you could do some good shit with the brass oh, band section on. on some Rush songs. It'd be so yeah. cool. Yeah, I completely agree. So, you know, Brian Spangler, if you happen to be listening, there's your next <laughs> there's our next uh, Hell yeah. one of our next ones <laughs> and it, it was a trick question too because then it was uh done i guess there's these guys who are in st paul minnesota st paul's flat earth brewing which i kind of love oh. uh they learned that rush was coming to play a show in town so they're like let's make a beer named after them and see if we can get them to like come drink in our tap room and it worked wow, uh, so, so they released a beer they're just they did a classic porter and then every time that they know rush is coming back into the area they do like a different variant Cool. Based on different Rush songs, and now there's like a tradition that Russian comes and like hangs out with them or whatever. That's so. cool. That's Man, really cool. That's how you. That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how you like keep coming right? yourself in there. Yeah. All right, we have two more for you so guys does that here. Count? Do we Wait, I it? thought that was it. Yeah, oh, we, we yeah, got two. That, that, that was a trick question, but we've got two more. Hmm. So gravely names beers after songs. Cygnus was named after. A yeah, band. and okay. originally Cygnus X One was the first uh, confirmed uh, black hole that we ever actually got telemetric telescopic readings on to oh. prove those theories about uh, general relativity correct back in I think like 1971 or something. I was going to ask when, if that was yeah. before or after the, the name yeah, of the that was, tune. That was the, so Cygnus X1 first black hole <laughs> then a Rush song then a classic porter. Dang I was about to Rush on that yeah. one man that would have been amazing. <laughs> they're like yeah we love Rush. Yeah, we, <laughs> we like, They're like at Stanford they're like we decided to name the black hole for them just because we heard they were touring nearby and we're like if they were Why ever in not? town we could name some variant black holes. We could find another black hole yeah, and name yeah. it after another Rush song. <laughs> Man, exactly. when I first learned about black holes, that was like if uh, just my biggest fear was just any day now we'd be sucked into right one. Into it one. was just like yeah, it was the wormhole. Just, yeah. <laughs> the thing that's cool about it though is that as you get sucked in, time stops, so you never actually get sucked in. Is that what YouTube is? Yeah, yeah. I too. Right. Yeah, TikTok okay. too. Gotcha. Yeah, I too oh, have seen it. Horizon. Man. All right, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, our next entry. I'll have what the gentleman on the floor is having. Gosh. It's starting to mess with my head, all these different... Right. Classic uh, Harry Met Sally reference there, I think. I'll have what she's having. Oh. Read the, read the, na- the thing. I'll again. have what the gentleman on the floor is having. Oh, this one definitely could go both ways. Beer. It really could. Yeah? It's a big old beer. Big old beer? Because he's on the floor. Mm-hmm. Or someone's on the floor. He's had many. He's had a lot of that. Or he's murdered. <laughs> or he's dead. But then that, then I feel like that's where the song part comes in. Yeah. It really if he's be. murdered, it's a song. I'm Maybe. assuming it's a him. He fucked up. Like, yeah. yeah. It does say gentleman, but you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll have what the gentleman on the floor is having. Yeah. I'm going beer. You want okay. beer? <sighs> I think I'm. I think I'm on beer too. Beer. Okay. I don't know where beer you board, are on it. Board, beer. Beer time. Yeah. Clocking in at twelve percent, this English style barley wine by McGuire's Irish Pub and Brewery in Pensacola, Florida, was released in two thousand and three. Cool. So two thousand and three. That's early for like a big old boy stout like or a barley wine like that. Proving that barley wine is life, but also possibly death or murder, depending oh, on uh, what you guys have heard here. Like that. Our final Brilliant. entry: a postulation on precarious thought. And transient delusion. I cheated. I know this one. A postulation on you precarious did. thought David. and transient delusion. I'm removing myself from this. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. <sighs> Michael. So this is down to us. Yeah. What do you think? I'm uncomfortable. Are you? <laughs> With like what? <laughs> Me? Us? You. Or the, you. <laughs> you. I, you. Specifically you. Just you. You're too close. <laughs> can, you, can you please back up? Stop <laughs> breathing on me. For the love of Christ, it's been the whole night. <laughs> the whole night. It's too close. I can't, I can't do this. I can't say it. Give me out of here. Headphones no off. More. No, no more. The Paris girls quit the show. Paris, 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 Paris. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'm um, going to like put that on a loop. For like, <laughs> and then we're going to do EDM over it. And we're going to play it at next year's uh, Brass Band Festival. Yes. <laughs> That's all I want. To, I want an up. hour slot of yeah. that. <laughs> You, you got it. God, real crowd pleaser, you know? Real, truly. The kids won't be And then worried. we just get up on stage and we just do this, this the whole, whole time. time. Hmm, it's interesting because it seems like a postulation on precarious <laughs> thought and transient delusion. Michael, what are your thoughts? What are your precarious <sighs> thoughts and transient delusions? I, I don't know. It all confuses me, so... <laughs> I'm a little bit scared. I think it's a song or a band. I, I think, think it's music. Just music. I think it is, too. Yeah. That's my... That's your... 
Is that your final that's answer? Not, that's my final answer. Wrong or right? Submit it. That was my button. Well, we were discussing this <laughs> segment. David did not know any of the answers previously, but he was like, if you're doing this, you have to just pick a name from Burial because every one of their beer names is so goddamn pretentious. Oh, they almost define the style. Yeah. Uh, so this is by Burial Beer Company. Yeah. Oh, uh, we, we picked it as a Hail Mary at the end because it's so pretentious that you like kind of have to assume it's music. But it, yeah, that's their is. double AZ IPA. Uh, out of our, out of the uh, good old Asheville, North Carolina. So we only I missed love- one. Let's go with it. Yeah, let's so go with that. We're round up to hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, okay. I'll round right. it up. Great. Yeah, yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah, sure. This is yeah. not a bell curve. <laughs> oh my god! Why not? Don't be jealous. <laughs> Says the guy who <laughs> missed our round three. Yeah, you just yeah. gave up. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't give up. I knew the answer. I would have cheated. I always do. It. I love uh, their can art, though. <laughs> they do have good. Yeah, they have good can Some art. Really and honestly, they have can. really good beer. Burial's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. After the wicked weed thing a few years ago i'm yeah. glad that we still have a burial down in uh, Asheville, north carolina holding oh. it down for the the weird the weird old craft brew dudes and girls and i gentlemen. went to Asheville the first time an opening moment here Jeez, what year was that well actually i went to see um pat Metheny there uh stellar jazz musician if you're familiar um very good music scene there too oh yeah huge i i so enjoyed my time over there and um, I didn't get to visit any breweries or anything, but I loved the scene. I loved the the look of it, the feel of it. Uh, also, it's uh, it is Asheville's a river town. Am I right on that? Yeah, it's the uh, God. I mean, I should know this, but I'm forgetting the name of the river. I'll think of it in like five minutes and I'll just yell it. But That's yeah, fine. there's we like a nice a little baby. river that goes through there, and like it's also kind of in the mountains. So there's like a little bit of everything. I like uh, yeah. I like river towns because of the the way that they're laid out mm-hmm. it's so unique because you're dealing directly with mother nature 100 you're at her, yeah. her will on water yep. you know? yeah, yeah. You build your so house nothing, up yeah no nothing horizontal all vertical yeah and, and they have high. like i mean the downtown is kind of nestled in the little like yeah kind of like i always think about uh, Asheville as kind of like the uh rivendell <laughs> it's like nestled at the base sure. of the misty mountains yeah. of course like, you do yeah well you know it's cool it's like it is it's really cool little mountains river town like and but it's just blown up as like what it is today but kind of kept that spirit it didn't turn into gatlinburg like it kept that spirit of like having niche festivals and music and good crap i mean they were they've been the craft beer town you know, east of the Mississippi or whatever since the freaking nineties or oh, whatever. That's cool. So yeah, that's and they've they've kept that alive down there that's too, cool. which is great. That's amazing because yeah. you know, to be able to point to one location, craft beer's obviously super popular and you know, a place like this even it makes it accessible for a lot of people mm-hmm. to a shop like this where you can home you know, get your homebrew stuff and to be able to point at one location and go, this is still the capital of it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think Asheville's holding it down, and, and Barrel's a big part. Still of Still, never been. Really? No. No. We'll, really? we'll take a trip. Where'd it go? We might. We might. Uh, slight teaser. We might be doing a beer with Highwire down there. That's Whoa. right. Because they're uh, yeah, they're involved in Louisville Beer Week, and they also are participating in our Legend Series collabs. So That's yeah, great. stay tuned. So every episode, we do ask guests to bring a show and tell item. And Haley, I believe you brought something for us. I brought a little treat. Hell yeah. Uh, we all need a little treat sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's not beer. It starts as beer, kind of, but, you know, ends up being a little bit extra, a little beer with a kick, right? Uh, so We're I, fans of that. yeah. So I brought um, uh, Wilderness Trail, our small batch high rye bourbon, uh, for us to drink. It is a bottled and bond bourbon, uh, 51%, or, sorry, 64% corn, uh, 24% rye, 12% malt barley. We're like super transparent as a company, so we'll just tell you like our mash bill. We just we just don't care. Um, All the good breweries do that too. It's like that's not what the magic is. I yeah. mean, it's really yeah. not. Like we even the the our proprietary yeast strain we will sell to you. It's on our website. You can buy it right now. What are you gonna do? Like, are you gonna replicate it? Like, yeah. not to say you don't have the skills, but like, good luck. You know what I mean? Like, no one's gonna. It's like a band. You can't replicate that. Yeah, same exactly. band. You can buy the sheet yeah. music yeah. for like fucking all along the watchtower but you're well that's a bob dylan song but Jimi hendrix like you know whatever <laughs> i totally get yeah. it though you know it's... so Jimi hendrix can do it but you, not you yeah not you it's not the no. same uh-uh. not Jimi the hendrix same. bought the sheet music too yeah. there you go bob exactly. Dylan. exactly no reason to get excited <laughs> yeah so um this is our high rye bourbon uh we call it a high rye um just because basically anything over like 18% of a flavor grain is considered high. Um so ours is 24%. So we're really putting that out there for you. And the reason why that's like such a like kind of important moniker is obviously corn is your cheapest grain, right? 
And so, you know, a lot of distillers will put like 70 plus percent corn uh, in their mash just to have that as a filler. Obviously, it's going to part and part starches and sweetness. It's also going to work as a surfactant to help mitigate any kind of like overflow when it comes to like distilling with rye. Um because that's a frequent thing, right? With rye, when you distill with rye, rye uh, turns into paper mache as well, like in a mash. Bill. Oh my god! It's yeah. so uh, it turns it to paper mache in a mash, and then like when when you're doing uh, when you're fermenting, then I mean it's easily like Mentos with pop, right? Yeah. Like it's just going to overflow so fast, and that has to do with like the cellular structure of it, and like where the protein is, and the enzymes, and all that fun stuff. Basically, to where. Um, corn kind of works as a surfactant to like help mitigate that as much as you can without having having to add like any kind of protein rest or anything like that or to agitate it to keep it you know keep it from overflowing but um, that said you know it also imparts having a higher rye uh, content imparts a lot of that flavor into there so yeah thought we would uh, try a little bit yeah I, I'd love yeah. to absolutely can I have they ever tried just putting like a spaghetti noodle over the um, boil pot? <laughs> oh, that's like the old that's, like uh, that's old what I do at home. And just it's like the ice cube. Yeah. Have you heard that one? The yeah, ice cube. Yeah. You ever lick, lick a your wooden spoon is what I always heard. <laughs> Stick your finger in there. They right? sell a product oh, called right. Firm Cap, and I'm pretty sure that's all that that is. Like <laughs> yes. Charlie Papazian's facial oils gathered into a. <laughs> yeah. Oh my just god. Scraped that's together. called terroir. You that's, guys, come on. Yeah, come on now. Let's talk about that natural bio. We have a All right, spoon. glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Over here. Should I just hand this yeah, we to gotcha. you or yep. what? Yeah. yeah, just uh, nips. Yeah, just a little tasty taste. It is a hundred proof because it's bottled in a bond. So you know, take Thank you, one and pass it down. <laughs> Thank you all for this. <laughs> it sounded like a marching brass band. Like, uh, what, do they, what do they call those? Like a just a marching song. Marching, or yeah, like a marching yeah. band, marching yeah. tune, a march, a march. march. There you yeah. go. That's a what march, they call yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were in marching Music band. Expert. So yes, it, we did. We did, we, we did that whole thing. I just like marching making spaghetti band. references at this point because we started Mambo Italiano. Um, Wilderness com- Trail. Yeah. Campari. Campari. Oh, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> for those that don't know, we were recently acquired by Campari. For Currently, they are 70% owners of us. Um, they will move to a full 100% in 2031, I think. Wow. All for a grand total of a cool 600 mil. So, you know pretty fun so yeah and yeah, i have a bunch of spaghetti daddies to answer to hell so. yeah <laughs> we've all got a spaghetti daddy somewhere we all don't we all oh i'm looking at that's it. what that can that can should be called spaghetti, spaghetti daddy, daddy. yeah 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 there you go they missed that one when we do our okay. italian pills uh, in the shop we will name it spaghetti, spaghetti daddy yeah oh, that's so yeah. perfect yeah, we've not Spot written the recipe on. yet because we didn't have the name but yeah we got it now. you take the mambo yeah. you put it in a wilderness <laughs> trail barrel and then it's spaghetti daddy yeah i like it uh, yeah, right off the nose, you smell the rye. <sighs> you smell the heat. It's smooth. I get some dark cherry, <sighs> pomegranate on the nose. Mm-hmm. Definitely fruity up hey, front. Hey, take us take us through tasting. Yeah, how do we? Would you like to? Yes. Would you do that? Well, obviously, with it being a higher proof, you want to sniff it first, because otherwise, you're just going to blow your palate out. What's the right way to sniff, sniff it? Uh, actually with your mouth open That's is okay. the best way to do it. Um, just so you're like not just concentrating the air in one spot. Mm. Uh, and honestly, when you're like, when you're tasting these things, you're not, your, your mouth can actually only taste a few actual flavors, right? It's just sweet salt, uh, you know, things like that. So you're not getting the rest of that. The rest of that's actually coming from your old factories. Mm-hmm. And so you're just like, impo- basically you're, you're, you're imparting memory onto uh, onto what you're tasting mm, and that's, that's what's and or onto what you're smelling and that's what's coming through like within your like flavor and what you're actually tasting so it's kind of a mind trick which is why also flavor is so suggestive right if i tell you that i'm getting cinnamon you're going to start to like pick that up and you're going to start to smell that and kind of fucking deer and brown over here yeah <laughs> like mentalism going on <laughs> it's trick you all into smelling the good stuff um yeah. but i get a lot of i get a lot of like like fruit on the nose yeah. for sure it's very sweet on the nose there's like a little bit of like a tobacco essence but not much it's very much like a very fresh i tobacco-y. honestly i get the wood a lot too like yeah. i just get i mean obviously but like that to me just smells almost like 
reminiscent of like being out in a oak barn or like a, totally. honestly like being in the garage when you're like cutting up some good hardwood or something like that. I right, get that little fresh. bit of like floral oakiness. Which is a beautiful smell. It's like a cherry flower. Mm-hmm. It's like the essence. The yeah. Essence of cherry. Essence. Yeah. Well, you all make good shit. Yeah, we try, you know. Everything we do is sweet mash, so we don't use sour mash um, at all in our facility, which uh, basically goes to like the mashing process where whenever we're starting to mash those grains and trying to kind of, you know, break down those starch train, uh, starch trains, starch chains. Working on my starch <laughs> train. Yeah. Um, yeah, what we're doing, you know, in that process, a lot of times with sour mash, what you're doing is you're adding basically 20% of your water, 20 to 30% of your water is actually back set uh, from your previous fermentation, right? Or sort of basically your previous stillage cycle. Uh, with with us, we use all fresh water grains and yeast every single time. We don't use that back set. Um, and I think that really helps with like a lot of not over like the overall like flavor and the viscosity, but like it helps with the aging process as well to where you're not, um, cause it's more, it's not as acidic as sour mashes. So you're like creating a better environment when it comes to the aging process in the barrel to like really extract some of those really delicious oak flavors that we're, you know, what we're trying to get out yeah. of that. So and always like you guys do sweet mash and there's a couple other smaller distilleries that do that. And it always comes out to me as like a brighter, cleaner product. Mm -hmm. Not that any of it's unclean, but it's always just like pungent, Mm -hmm. bright. And even for being a hundred proof, like this is not a dark bourbon. Mm -mm, No, not at all. It's very bright. Yeah. It's very bright. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't like really like kick you in the pants in a lot of ways. And for for the proof, especially like you don't yeah. you don't taste that, you know, I've and honestly, like there's I mean, there's some stronger bourbons that I've tasted that don't don't have that, you know, really like strong alcoholic vapor kind of hit. There's also some more, you know, lower proof bourbons that really like just mm-hmm. rip apart your throat, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. So and what I like about stuff too, with especially with rye, and I actually like this in beers as well, but like, yeah, you get a little warming down here just from the high proof. It's not crazy here, mm-hmm. but then it gives you that little tiny bit of like a tingle, like on the front of your tongue mm-hmm. or yeah. just on the outside mm-hmm. of your lips or whatever. I always like that about, I think, I think that's what rye does to me at least. That's that's a tummy and rye. No, I get I go. Are you having an allergic reaction? (laughs) And then my face swells up. It's just it really brings home the aromas. Yeah, Yeah. I have to take six Benadryl. (laughs) EpiPen. Yeah, we do not have enough Patreon subscribers for (laughs) EpiPen. (laughs) No, I I just I always associate that with like rye whiskeys or like heavily rye bourbons or whatever. It like it's just real bright right in the front. It is right in the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. I I always feel just like a digestive. Like I always like shot of rye. My stomach is just like we're cool. We're good. Good. Move along. Yeah. Move along. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <sighs> well, yeah. this was a delightful conversation. We've Thoughts? kind of we've we've kind of crossed a lot of uh a lot of territory here. All the way from the uh, whenever the eight night whenever we decided the first what you're no, that's rude. We already said you're thirty three, so that would I'm not good at math. Nineteen eighty Nine. Nine. Okay, yeah, there we go. There you go. We started there with the Brass Band Festival. I can tell you how old. <laughs> we've moved all like... the way forward to the present. We've covered a lot of territory. We've covered a lot of uh music history we've covered a lot of beer history and i feel like it's brought us to this present moment to thank you guys for coming on and <laughs> sharing course. all that stuff with us yeah of it really course. has been like a, a broad journey through a lot of different avenues uh which to me is one of the most fun things about bourbon and beer and music all those things come together and it's not really about the the product or the thing per se but it's just about how all those things kind of come together yeah. to create fun experiences uh, which I have certainly had tonight and which everybody can have down in Danville for the Brass Band Festival. Danville. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Lowell. Danville. Well, Danville. Don, since you're talking, do you have anything to plug on the way out? Ah. Um, your turn. Well, let's see. I had something I was going to plug earlier and it has completely slipped my mind. I'm just going to again plug... Um, I guess I'm going to go back to Mid Journey because I've been fucking around with it a little bit today. <gasps> Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah. I All that weird to... open AI art generation and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was making it. Uh, we were working on some like weird t shirt designs and stuff, <laughs> and we we're putting some like things into there. And it's never perfect, but no. it's interesting how it can spit out things that you would have not expected that you could then iterate on or whatever. So I'm kind of scared of our like AI future, and I don't necessarily mm. know if I love it, but I, I'm here for it. It's been interesting yeah. to play with. It's I've, yeah. definitely worth exploring in some yeah. way, because I feel a little the same way. Like, makes me a little nervous, but yeah. 
it's so amazing and we've come up with it what what's there not to explore I know. at least a little bit you and know? it's here like people talking about should we ban yeah. it should we like regulate it like yeah we probably should do some of that stuff but like <laughs> yeah. it's hard to put the damn like once pandora's box pandora's is open box. oh absolutely yeah. it's over. you can't put the damn genie back in the bottle yeah absolutely baby you gotta rub it the right way going back to our music <laughs> yes. yeah, I Christ- it christine better. aguilera for <laughs> those who don't know it went yeah. through my i was singing yeah. it right in my head for that, sure that's christina uh, yes. yes, I'm a genie yeah. in a bottle, baby. Oh, well, now I know it. Now, come, yeah. come, come on, let me out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you didn't know about that. You didn't know. You didn't know you were getting any of that. Did I you? didn't know about that. <laughs> my body's saying let's go, yeah. but my heart is yes. saying no. Yes. <laughs> Nice. Anyway, uh, would you guys like to <laughs> plug anything you guys have yeah, going Mike, on or Michael, something coming up, things you've been fooling around with? Yeah. <laughs> you can plug the Brass Band Festival or just anything in your life, pop culture, music, oh, man. good beer, good food, Gosh. weird apps. I am I love all that stuff. Um, <laughs> anything you've been playing around like with food. this week that you'd like to share with anybody? That's I have been so, I've been in planning, Yeah. Plan, you know, someone came to me uh, at the beginning of the month and they said, are you in don't talk to me after June until after June? And I said, yes, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yes, full fledged planning. And it's, uh, I, you know, the festival is going to be fun. And I guess the one thing that I'd like for people to hear is that it really is its own unique experience in the sense that you're not going to hear that music all in the same place anywhere else. It just doesn't happen. And it's right here in Kentucky and f- it's been going on for 33 years. So to have it here, and, and and also free, no cost. There's no cost. Wait, what? It's free. free. It's completely free. <laughs> How did you just breeze over that the last hour? And because, a half? <laughs> because there's so much good music, I forget to even plug the fact that it's free for everybody. You don't have to pay a thing to get there. You bring a chair, bring a blanket, and come come sit, come, come, come dance, come eat some great food. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think one of the cool cornerstones of this festival is always the poster. There's always, you know, music festivals have really cool lineup posters, but Haley can attest to this cause she's a witness to it. But the festival, the Brass Band Festival has such a t- tradition of posters mm-hmm. where every year an artist is commissioned to make a poster based on the theme for that year. And, and so there's, there's a theme, there's artwork to, to go with that. And the theme for this year is free your mind and Ooh, like the it. brass will follow. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. That's sweet. So, right. you know, we're trying to get people to open their, open their minds a little bit and be open-minded to the different styles of brass music that there is and that there truly is for something for everybody involved oh, yeah. and inclusivity and, and, and all that. So, you know, um, come, if anything, come, come see it, come, come hear it. You know, it's, it's, it's its own unique experience and the art is cool. So please at least check out the poster. It's amazing. Our artist did such a cool job. Like um, local businesses, like just have walls of these posters, yes. just like they're, yeah. co- they're collected throughout the years. One so. of the banks you can go and you can walk through their hallways and they've got each wow. year's, but 33 yeah. years of posters to display. And, and you just, you, it's so fun to go at least go witness that alone and, and see all the tradition behind it. So there's a ton of tradition involved. Um, you, you know, but like anything, like I said, any earlier, anything that's going, been going on 33 years, yeah. it needs a shot in the arm and, and needs, it's, it's craving for something new. And that's what I've brought. So, that's what I'm just really excited. I'm, Hell yeah. I'm, I'm just, Hell yeah. I'm a musician and I'm excited about that part alone. And that's, that's, uh, I want everybody to feel as excited about it as it, about that, that I do, as I do. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think that's, yeah, noble and valuable. And, uh, we'll put all the links too. We encourage everybody to check that out. Check it yeah. out. It's really cool. It's really cool. Haley, do you have anything to plug? I mean, you know, I'm just hanging out, really. <laughs> just chilling. Um, obviously, Wilderness Trail, duh. Uh, buy our shit. We're everywhere. <laughs> no, uh, we, you know, it's been it's been a very transformative time for us in the last like six months, really. Uh, so, you know, excited to see where we go with things. I mean, uh, we do have. Oh my god, how did I not do this before? We have um a seven year old rye whiskey out. 
Uh, it is available in limited quantities throughout the state of Kentucky. I think only 200 cases went out in the state of Kentucky, wow. and about 700 are at our distillery. Cool. Uh, a little bit shy of that now because we've been selling for a little bit, but it is the oldest age-dated rye we've ever released. Um and I'm very partial to our rye. Uh, I think it's just delicious. Uh, and so having it at seven year is just chef's kiss. Oh, yeah. uh, and then we are releasing in late August, early September, our eight year weeded bourbon, which is the oldest age stated wheat we'll ever, we've ever released. So again, that'll be another like, you know, um, probably 80 20 split between what's at the distillery versus what is out and available in the state of Kentucky. It will be Kentucky only though. Um, so that'll be exciting. So look forward to be looking for that. Uh, we'll start promoting that soon. Um, and then, yeah, just, you know, trying to truck along in this new, this new environment, uh, and excited to be here. So yeah, that's it. Hell yeah. what you got, David? I'm going to plug words with friends. <laughs> oh, ah. that's like the Scrabble app or whatever. I love that app. I I love it. I think it's great. So on the inside, I'm actually like 49 years old, um, mm -hmm. but I've uh, <laughs> been reading a lot lately and uh, you would not believe how much that increases your Scrabble game mm -hmm. like, big time. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you just cheat and you look up the websites. <laughs> and tell you, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but if you ever no, want to like not. make words with strangers... And not like date them or like do any of that. Just a little casual game of hey, scrap. Hey, you know how love begins. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, uh, well, we'll we'll spell out different things. You know. Yeah. It's gonna be. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's gonna be. It gets a little intense, huh? Yeah, this is my like life goal. Um, <laughs> I like it's like it. the Nat King Cole tune. Love L is for there the you way go. you look. <laughs> just so, just spell love to your next. Your next prospect. V I think he's doing more explicit score. words. You than... lose, you dirty, No, it starts. It starts with love. Uh huh. <laughs> And yeah. then goes to that's the mind wanders. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yes. We uh, when we do Italian too. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. That's some more. Words with friends, it never ends. Now you're <laughs> anyway. Oh. Old and wearing depends together because oh. you bet on that's some more. Yeah. That's wow, more. we we've really, really, really from the gamut on this one. I like it. I, I like it. it a lot. <laughs> well, thank you, Michael, and thank you, Haley, for coming on tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, this has been a blast. Uh, if you all could just take us out real quick with the uh, Paris Pals. Paris Pals, Paris Pals, Paris Pals, Paris Pals. Paris Pals, Paris Pals. <laughs> <laughs> Available now on Spotify. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. See you soon. <laughs>